welcome back to the Spokes and Reviews podcast. Uh, my name is Alina Perry. I am the education reporter, the K-12 education reporter um, over at the Spokesman. And with me today, I've got superintendent of West Valley Schools, uh, Kyle Rydell. Welcome. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thanks for the invitation. We look forward to uh, sharing some of our information today. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really eager to talk today. Um, we're going to chat about uh, West Valley's capital levy that they're sending to November ballots, um, or they've sent to November ballots. Uh, Washington voters are going to face a ton of stuff um, on these ballots in November. You know, presidential races, uh, governor, to name a few. Um, they're also going to be facing a capital projects levy put forth by the West Valley School District. Um, so, Kyle, I was hoping we could start by you telling me a little bit about uh, West Valley School District. Um, yeah, just your district for people who might not be aware. Okay, so West Valley is nestled right into the valley. Um, we're surrounded by East Valley, Central Valley, Spokane Public Schools, um, Orchard Prairie, and a little bit of Mead School District. So we're right there in the middle of that valley and, and surrounding district. So we have 3,400 students approximately, um, a little over 550 staff members. And our staff traditionally live, um, some in our district, but kind of in those surrounding areas. Um, our district is 25 square miles, uh, so it's one of the smaller districts. And we've got uh, 16 different pathways for students uh, throughout our district um, in regards to their choices around neighborhood schools, um, choice schools uh, being an elementary, a very uh, robust preschool program, and then a couple of different options at middle school where they may choose city school um, or our traditional centennial middle school or our three options in high school where students can choose the traditional West Valley High School where that traditional approach of sports and activities and those types of things or um, two of our other schools that tie to um, Project Bay School, Spokane Valley, um, or a choice school in Dishman, uh, whatever path they choose, we want them to have opportunities for them to be successful post high school. And then uh, kind of that key opens the door to uh, their future. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time the last couple of years really focusing on our strategic plan, uh, kind of the pillars of belong, achieve and succeed, and truly trying to tie everything around the student experience and helping to support that student voice. Um, we had 1,150 um, people that put their fingerprints on this new strategic plan. So, so we're excited about launching it this fall. Yeah, excellent. Um, so yeah, a lot of options, lots to choose from. Um, and just to kind of put West Valley size into context, uh, you're the sixth most highest enrolled in the county um, out of like 19 school districts, I think. Um, so yeah, so you're, you're on the high end. Um, small district, but also bigger, you know, yeah. depending on uh, what you look at. Good perspective. I didn't <laughs> think of it that way. Uh, yeah. So um, you've got a levy on the ballots, yes. a uh, capital levy. Uh, tell me a little bit about this levy, uh, basic stuff. How much uh, How much is it seeking to collect? Um, all that good stuff. So, so let's rewind a little bit around that conversation around capital projects um, and their levies. Um, we've run a capital project levy for over 20 years. And it's been one of those pieces that has helped support our district around um, technology, safety, um, and just the, the whole piece of keeping our buildings um, operational uh, from a maintenance um, standpoint, along with the, the safety components of what, what levies do, capital projects levies for that matter. Um, so 17 years ago, we ran a bond, uh, replaced our high school, beautiful building, um, been well maintained. And so our committee really focused on running uh, a bond in last February's election to really focus on those buildings around the district. There were really five projects that were discussed. Um, we put all of our efforts into that bond, and that bond was unsuccessful, just as the other five in Spokane County were. So our board and our community really gathered around the idea of, okay, well, what's next? If it's really not bond time, um, what do we need to do? And so we are currently in a three-year capital projects uh, levy cycle, um, and that capital projects levy expires at the end of this uh, fiscal year, 2024. So our board really was like, hey, our community is not ready for this bond quite yet, so let's replace that capital, that expiring capital projects levy um, on the November ballot 
to create this three-year cycle again, give us a little bit of a runway between when our bond uh, ran in February to maybe down the road 2026 or 2027 uh, to look at a possible bond replacement. Um, but really tying in these, these projects, uh, when you go to your community, you're asking for 20 years, which is a long time. It's, it's kind of very similar to a, somebody that owns a home um, and how they pay their mortgage. So going back out to our voters to say, hey, let's just do this for three years, right? We listened. Um, we did a great job of surveying our community and asking, hey, what was the, what did you support? What did you not support around the bond? And so, tr you know, typically it was right around that taxes, um, the economy. And so our board really stepped back and said, hey, let's, let's create this three-year replacement cycle. Um, let's address some major needs in the district for the next three years and then maybe circle back on that conversation around, okay, is it time for a bond? Do we look at those high priority projects um, at that time? So so our, our levy, our replacement capital projects levy is truly around that three year um, look at, okay, what are the pressing issues? We know we've got a roof, a roof at West Valley High School that needs to be replaced. Um, we've got some of our elementary, our parent pickup and drop off zones are not safe. Um, in one particular building, 40% of our parents are utilizing their drop off. So they're dropping their kids off on one of our busiest intersections in our valley, um, which we're working with the city on as well. But that, so 115 of those cars are going through that community. And it just, it's, it's creating some, some problems. So we need to address... Um, a couple of those schools to just really kind of revamp that whole safety around parent pickup and drop off. And the other win is maximizing the educational components of keeping kids in school and not releasing them early to go get picked up because that 115 car line uh, can be a challenge uh, for those particular schools. Yeah, wow. Okay. Um, so more on sort of the financial side of, of this levy, uh, you're hoping that it will be less of a financial pill to swallow per se, you know, a three year smaller price tag uh, will be more appealing to voters uh, than a 20 year, gosh, I don't remember how much your bond was for, but um, more than the levy. That's kind of what you're thinking? Yeah, so so when you look at that, that 20 year component, right, that tax burden is carried out over the course of those 20 years. When you look at a capital projects levy, you can levy up to six years. Um, our current cycle is doing these every three years. So really it's that component of let's just focus on these projects over a course of three years. Um, our current capital projects levy that is expiring is at $1.26 per thousand. Um, it's going to drop to a dollar per thousand in our replacement uh, levy uh, proposal to our taxpayers. Okay, that's the one that's on the ballot in November. Yes. The yes. dollar per mm -hmm. thousand. Yep. Um, okay, so... I think how much is it? How much is the total? It's eleven point eight million over the yeah, three years. Over right? the three years. So each year, um, I think it it ramps up just a little bit based on our figures. But it's about three point eight million the first year, and then I think right about four million the second year, and then like four point one million the third year. So projects really, you look at um, what was part of our bond. And then what are those things that we need to take care of right now? So one of those being uh, West Valley High School, we replaced half of the roof um, last summer. And then we're just looking to replace the other half. And we didn't have a funding source and bond didn't pass. So we had to kind of pivot. And so pivoting to really look at this replacement capital projects levy as being the funding source for that, along with um, really addressing some safety and security pieces throughout the district. So we've got 130 cameras that are over 17 years old and so those need to be replaced that's part of this process and this particular capital projects levy replacement um, and then like i said earlier um, really around that student pickup parent uh, piece of the the pickup parent drop off um, student safety uh, before school and after school as being our primary focus in year one of the capital projects levy and then looking at projects replacing more cameras looking at other locations around the district to continue to improve their facilities and then hopefully you know right fast forward to 2027 and our bond could look considerably different because we were able to tackle some of these smaller projects uh, to create a little bit less tax burden on our community over those 20 years 
Yeah. Okay. I hear that. Um, I would, it, would it be possible for you to compare how much this levy, if it passes, the total tax rate would be um, the first year of the levy towards West Valley schools um, and how much people are currently paying towards West Valley schools? Yes, I can. Oh. This is a great little opportunity to talk through um, some of what we've really kind of laid out for our community around, okay, so here's the here's the factual piece of data, right? So mm-hmm. an average home in West Valley is 370000 So that's that's what the county says. In West Valley, your your tax basin is about an average house is 370000 Of course, we know we've got houses in the millions, plus maybe houses in the 100000 range. So that $370,000 house with the last um, levy collection was, I believe, right about... Um, Oh gosh, I'm gonna say this. Um, four hundred, like four hundred sixty-nine thousand. Four. I'm sorry. Let's back that up. <laughs> it was not four hundred sixty-nine thousand. So a three hundred seventy thousand dollar house was paying four hundred sixty-nine dollars per year. Okay. And is that towards just West Valley to- schools? Towards West Valley schools, yes. Okay. Around that capital projects levy. So when we look at that same three hundred seventy thousand dollar house right? $70,000 home value, right? Assessed value. Um, at a dollar, um, that's $31 or $370 for the year, right? So um, so it's really, it's that's why we can say that we're taking that $1.26 to a dollar. So it's a reduction of $469 per year down to $370 per year. Um, and so that's that reduction in taxes uh, for the next three years. Okay. And I'm sorry, is that the total tax bill towards West Valley or is that just the capital That's levy? That's just the capital projects levy okay. replacement. So talking full picture here, do you have that number handy? So I don't have that number, but okay. I've got I've got some basic numbers. So uh, the state so total tax in West Valley as far as what um, our proposed EPNO levy that passed back in February, so that that will be at 250 per thousand plus this dollar, so the total would be 350 um, per thousand to support West Valley School District. Okay, and that's this year? That's, that'll be 25, 26, and 27. Okay, um, and then, I'm sorry, so that would be, if, if this one passes? When this one passes, when, right? <laughs> there you go. Uh, when this one passes, yeah. it'll be that number. Yes. Okay. yeah. Okay, um, okay. So I know you kind of touched on it a little bit, but could you tell me a little bit more about the projects um, you're seeking? Or do you have more numbers? No, no. Let's move on to kind of those project discussions. So, uh, again, we when we look at capital projects funds, we really look at what are the what are the needs right now Mm -hmm. and maybe what are the needs down the next two years, three years. So. The main focused areas, focus areas that we're looking at this particular year. So 24, we will collect in 25. So this next summer, we're really focusing on that safety and security. So what are those components of safety and security? Um, so cameras, updating that, updating the, the parent pickup and drop off zones in our elementaries, and even looking at our middle schools um, as far as that first year of collection, plus that West Valley High School roof has to be completed which is right off the top, I think it's 1.2 million uh, to finish that second half of that project. So that's year one. And then year two is really kind of that that understanding and idea around, okay, what other safety and security aspects do we need to um, look at? And so annually, it's just, okay, what's on the top as far as what needs to be done first? And then what are things that we can wait a year or two years to complete? Yeah. Um, Can you talk a little bit about the condition, like when you say cameras, for example, what are they, what kind of condition are they in? I know you said 17 years old, but uh, what are some features that, that could be upgraded by buying new cameras, for example? So one of the, the pieces that we've noticed with those cameras that are 17 year old, years old is truly the ability for us to identify um, the zoom capability. So, mm-hmm. so right now it's like just recording outside and you're like, okay, I, I, I can see people moving. But now with that ability to zoom in, capture maybe license plates, capture you know clothing, 
that type of thing to be able to identify, okay, what was it? What did they have in their hands? Uh, versus right now, you just see, you know, it's people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and our tech department has done a great job of maintaining the system, but it's just, it's at this point now where um, we're one of the districts that is also part of RIG-9, that all of our cameras, if they, so these 130 are not connected to that system at RIG-9. We do have, I think it's about 120-ish that are connected to that system that in case of an emergency or if there's an accident, RIG-9 through our authorization can access our cameras and see, okay, hey, there's a fire across the street from your school. We can go through your camera system and view that. Mm -hmm. So that's another piece of, of public safety that I think is a huge component of just our partnership with, uh, with the safety and security teams, our fire department and our police departments. Yeah, and, and what kind of condition is, I know half of the roof is, is new, but the old half, what kind of condition is that in? So again, a shout out to our maintenance department. <laughs> they do a great job of patching when they need to. Um, but the product that was put down 17 years ago should have lasted longer than 17 years ago. It's, it, they call it window screening. And it's that um, it's just that deterioration of the sun um, and the weather on the roof starts to create like a screen and water just infiltrates through that system. And so they've been able to patch the areas. They did the primary focused areas that were the worst uh, deteriorated. And then we figured, OK, we can get at least two years out of the remainder of this roof if we patch these areas. So they've patched those. But those patches are not going to last um, much longer than a year, maybe two years. So, yeah. Um, okay. Um, well, not to pivot too hard, but I wanted to ask a little bit about the bond, um, which I know is old news at this point. Mm -hmm. um, it was in February. Uh, I don't recall what percent you guys got, but it wasn't the 60% that a school district needs. Um, in order for a bond to pass. Um, and like you said, none of the five bond-seeking districts around the county passed theirs. Um, uh, it, it just it kind of painted the picture of this landscape where voters, um, or at least not a super majority of voters, felt comfortable to uh, pass this bond, you know, with the state the economy is, it is in, like we're all feeling it. Mm -hmm. um, can you kind of explain um, what, was the district's desire to go for a capital levy instead of another bond? Like you could have just tried a bond again and put that on the November ballot. Yep. Why, why a levy instead? That's a, that's a great question around just what is our community perspective right now? Um, we are very fortunate in Spokane County and in West Valley that all of our EPO levies were successful, right? In the upper 50%, some again, over that 60% threshold, which it still requires a 50% pass rate. So very, very supportive of our community's support of our programs throughout our districts, right? So uh, our community, I believe, sees the value in continuing the programming that we're all offering. But I think the bond, you know, and, and in West Valley situation, we're a 20-year bond district. We traditionally have ran bonds that are we pay off over 20 years. So that, that to a community member, I think, is just one of those pieces of, okay, this is a little bit of a bigger picture. Um, so we're going to be a little bit more cautious on our yes vote towards a 20-year tax burden versus, versus a three-year tax burden. And yes, we can see what, what our EP&O levy pays for, right? It's the additional staff members, it's the sports, it's the activities, it's, you know, the transportation and, and those types of components that they're able to see more clearly. Um, but I think, you know, part of it is we, we did a great job in surveying our community to ask, OK, what what is it? Um, what were the concerns with the bond? A couple of pieces were truly around the economy, right? Taxes um, was another one. And then just some confusion, too, around some of the projects that we proposed. Uh, some of them could see the, the distinct value of our oldest middle school um, trying to renovate that. So city school is over 100 years old. But it's like, OK, well, what do we do? How do we make that work? We talked about putting two campuses on that campus. So that could have confused some voters, um, you know, and it's it's it was a ninety two million dollar bond. So it was a big price tag. Um, and so I think it's it's one of those components that our community was just like, OK, we needed some more information. And maybe right now is not the best timing. 
And so traditionally, we've run capital projects levies that renew every three years and really hasn't been a problem in that cadence. Um, and so it really took took our board um, an opportunity to really kind of step back and say, okay, let's maybe pause. Um, our buildings, they're, they're, they're not necessarily falling down. Our maintenance team has done a great job of maintaining these buildings, but there's some behind the walls, above the ceilings, b- below the floors that needs to be addressed at some point. So I, I think it's just this bridge, right? We're going to call this capital projects levy maybe a bridge to a future bond, but really looking at the perspective of let's pause a little bit right now let's get some of these projects done that we need to have done. And then maybe, like I said, in 2026 or 2027 or 2028, let's kind of look at this again. So uh, one of the components of this is we had over 55 individuals throughout our community that were part of our facility planning committee. They included students, uh, staff members, parents, um, and community members that were really thoughtful around what they were hoping to accomplish through this bond, right? We, we were swinging at every pitch trying to make sure this was, was going to pull through, um, and it didn't. And then I think it's just that opportunity to say, okay, all right, let's reflect, let's do some surveying, uh, let's seek some feedback from our community, and then look at what's next. And I think our board really took uh, a very thoughtful approach to, okay, let's, let's build this bridge for three years, right? Let's let's do a capital projects replacement levy for three years. Let's tackle some of these projects that need to happen. Then let's look at maybe where the economy is, what we could do as far as communicating information to our community uh, around that support. And I know there are a couple of districts that are putting their bonds on in uh, in November, and, and I wish them all the best. Um, but at this time, West Valley was just like, hey, let's just pause. Let's let's take an approach to kind of think through what this looks like around um, the major projects that we can do right now under this capital projects replacement levy. Yeah. Um, okay. And then last question on this topic: um, Why why November? Um, that's another like I said. Like this is a pretty busy election year. You know, we've got I've got new governor for sure, new president for sure. Um, you know, new. CMR is uh, vacating her seat, so that's another one uh, mm-hmm. in Congress that's up for grabs. Um, are you? How do you think those like super high profile races might uh, affect support for your levy? Timing, right? Timing is the piece. So our board was really thoughtful around. We know that that our fiscal year, right? This is our last fiscal year of those three year collections. So we knew we didn't want to run this in August, right? Just August is not traditionally one of those, everybody's at the lake or enjoying their summer vacation. So we really looked at that November as being the time to, to really put something. So traditionally, you see a lot of school um, ballot measures on the February or, or November elections. Um, traditionally, yeah, a few may run in April and a few may run in August. And so the turnaround time for us to put something on an August election cycle was just not in favor. And so our board was very thoughtful around some of those conversations and feedback and input that we were doing surveys uh, with our community and felt like by the time we put in that resolution by August 6th, we were we were pretty geared in as far as what that November November election would look like. Yes, we may be on page three um, of this ballot, <laughs> but it's it's one of those pieces that our our funding source would expire at the end of 24. And if we weren't running this November, then it wouldn't be until the following year that we'd be able to take a collection. So there's some pretty uh, consistent projects that we need to accomplish within uh, the year 2025. Excellent. Okay. Um, Okay, I've got one more question for you, but it's not about any of this. So is there anything else you want to say about the levy, uh, the capital levy or the bond that failed, uh, any of that good stuff that we talked about uh, today? Uh, Just an invitation for our community to um, ask questions. We're going to continue to provide as much transparency around our budgets. Um, Our communications team has done a great job of providing that, that feedback on our website. Uh, where people can go and and see what you know what that looks like from that levy replacement uh, component, but then also just you know if there are questions that that people have, call ask. Um, Tammy Kimberly or myself or our assistant superintendent would be happy to answer those questions. 
Um, but yeah, it's just if if people don't have the information, please call and and we'll help uh, disseminate that information. We're also doing a few uh, scheduled kind of Zoom um, opportunities for our community to participate. Um, and if they're not able to participate that day, we'll send them out through. Um, our parent communication cycles. And so, yeah, it's just more of a, a transparent piece of, hey, if you have questions, call us. Uh, we'd be glad to talk through what this looks like. Again, we're going to send out mailers and try to inform them uh, the best we can. But yeah, there's if there's questions that relate to anything, yeah, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Great. Okay. Um, and then last question before I let you leave. Uh, school starts for you guys in about a week. Uh, what are you most looking forward to this school year? Ooh, ooh, teed this one up nice. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's always, again, I, I think education is is a unique, um, a unique field because we have the start and finishes, right? And, and we we traditionally get to launch the year and then wrap the year up in June, and then people have a little bit of break there in the summer. Um, and so really excited about just the work that we have done in West Valley uh, with our new strategic plan um, around just helping create a better experience for our students around belonging and achieving um, and, and being able to see our students succeed. Um, you know, just that, that culture, that positive culture. And Again, I was excited to see that over 1,150 voices and fingerprints are on this document. Um, we're, we're big with PLCs, professional learning communities, and just the engagement of our staff. We've done several trainings this summer that our staff have been there and been excited about where we're moving as a district. Um, so I'm just excited to see those, those faces come back onto our campuses and just really engage back in another 180 school days where, where we do as best as we can to help create a meaningful experience for them as students and our staff. And ultimately our community wins in that case. And so just uh, our unique opportunity to provide 16 different pathways for our students is powerful. Um, but just excited about this opportunity uh, just to get another launch in another year, so. Yeah, excellent. Um, well, I think that's about everything I have for you. Um, thank you so much for taking the time today and coming on our podcast. This was really fun. Invite me back anytime you want. <laughs> all right. We'll put another thing on the ballots and you'll be there. Um, all right. Well, yeah. Thanks oh, so much. And um, thank you for listening. Yes. Thank you.